Oh, is it? Road trips. Today on Road Trips, Dan and I head for the Washington coast to go to the annual International Kite Festival at Long Beach. So now, let's hit the road. Uh, today on Road Trips, I'm Dan Bradley. And I'm Todd Hilton. Today we'll be taking you to Long Beach, Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Long Beach, Washington. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> to a kite festival, which happens every third week in August. I should point that out. Uh, by the time you see this, it'll be extensively past that. Um, it's recommended. Uh, it's last like uh, through Sunday through the Saturday of that last week. And uh, usually the best days to hit them, in my opinion, are Friday and Saturday. Granted, you will have to fight traffic big time. <laughs> but still, it is a very, very good show to watch. It's called the... Uh, between parks and Pacific is the International Kite Festival. Uh, people from all over, clubs, all that sort of, all those type of people just come together, uh, show off the type of talents that they have, do competitions, and really, really have an awesome time. Uh, you see a lot of very colorful types of uh, kites, and very s different styles, way people fly them, massive competitions, massive competitions, it's a really, really impressive show. The best of the best from this area go there for once a year to compete and to see who actually will win again each year. Uh, we'll be talking with a few people from a club there that uh, have been doing this for years. They even make their own kites, if I remember correctly. They do stunt kites and deltas and all that other stuff, which will be explained the different types and how they operate that type of thing later uh, when we talk to them. And they can explain it better than I can. Uh, you can jump in any time. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're going. You're going good. I'm just. Uh, yeah, that's 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 good. That's usually what I do. That's usually my job. <laughs> oh, we'll be. Uh, uh, we'll be getting uh, we'll be getting some interviews, um, second batch of interviews for the series, and we'd like to make this a regular thing whenever possible, uh, when we can get uh, uh, either employees of tourist attractions or uh, or any people that are around wh wherever we're happen to be going and uh, get as much information as we can um, this uh, this edition here is a once a year thing so by the time by the time you see this episode it will be uh, uh, weeks since it ended <laughs> so you won't actually have a chance to get up here and uh, uh, and see the uh, see the kite festival no, but we're hoping next year you might be able to get a chance to go down to, to see it it's really more impressive in person than actually seeing on the videotape. Yeah, like a, a lot of the things that we bring you, uh, we're, we're, we're not professionals. We do the best we can. <laughs> um, right now we're in Astoria as we've been starting. We've actually started several of our road trips from Astoria. <laughs> yes, we don't want to bore you with the, the same road over and over again. So that's that's why we've, we've been for our coast trips, except for the Astoria trip, that was uh, the only one that we actually went ahead and showed the entire trip, or for the most part. Um, and hopefully, after this, we'll start to get, uh, we'll start heading the other direction. Definitely. Definitely want to hit the other direction. Personally, I think this this area of, uh, area of the region is getting really, really boring. <laughs> really boring, I'm sorry to say. I don't know about you, V, 
viewers, but I think it's getting just a little bit too boring and it's pushing. Well, for us, because we this is like what the fourth episode we've come through here. So we've we've been yeah we've been seeing here. We practically uh, have have the road trips based here in uh, in Astoria. Um, but don't get us wrong. Part of the reason is there's so much to see on uh, on the Oregon coast. Um, in uh, one of our last episodes, with Mr. Crystal Boys, <laughs> uh, we checked out uh, Fort Stevens. Not near as much of it as we wanted to, for uh, mostly lack of time. Um, that and uh, we had a little bit of problem getting into some of the areas, so we didn't get them on tape. We do actually like to hear the type of uh, comments that you make. The range of viewers is right now that we've hit is between nine and sixty-five. Yeah, which, which is, is great. I'm excellent. very surprised. Excellent. That's you know more than <laughs> everyone's <expected>. watching road trips. <laughs> Yes, for those of you who are sitting and watching road trips, you're doing a good job. So you're the one not watching road trips, <laughs> like you should be. Uh, right now, uh, we're on the Astoria Bridge, uh, which I haven't been across in years. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool bridge, but it, it also can be kind of uh, intimidating. Uh, this, this part is uh, not so much the high up as when we get across this flat stretch here. We'll be almost right on the water for like a mile <laughs> yeah. and th this used to be years ago this used to be a toll bridge I, I believe because uh, the bridge wasn't paid for and they need to they needed to pay it off so it was a toll bridge for for years not anymore, not anymore. So we, ha we have the luxury of going across the across the bridge uh, um, tax-free <laughs> or so to speak Yes, yeah, so I've heard from several viewers that getting there is half the fun, and they are right. Getting there is absolutely 100% half the fun. And like we said, in our, in our case, it's half the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and that's why we show you because because uh, the the trip to the trip getting to wherever we're going usually usually is fun. Definitely. Definitely. And especially especially like now. I mean, we're on the bridge now, and we'll be going. Uh, We'll be on the road. We'll be finally on a section of road we haven't shown you before. <laughs> oh, yeah. Finally. Uh, hopefully sometime in the very near future, as in September may not be near future to you viewers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we hopefully plan on doing a road trip to Disneyland. Uh, practically not driving there. <laughs> but uh, the, actually showing you some of the, the sights in Disneyland. Yeah, the, the the trip is in the work, so let, let's put it that way. <laughs> We're not. Uh, we'll 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 do what we can to make that happen. We need to make a lot of arrangements, and it's that's going to cost us some money. Uh, but maybe, in fact, I didn't think about this before. Maybe if we can get uh, if we can get a uh, a sponsor or or two to help us out, that could uh, uh, that could save us some money there because. We are we, we make these trips with uh, using our own money. <laughs> we don't get paid for it. No. We do it just for for the just for the sake of doing it. <laughs> yes. It's it's re actually really fun doing it. Doing these shows. We wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't fun. <laughs> because because <laughs> because road trips pays zilch. <laughs> it pays jack. <laughs> so, so it's strictly for fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, uh, if uh, if anyone watching the show would uh, would be willing to to sponsor road trips, <laughs> we we would uh, more than more than uh, more than happy to uh, accept any any sponsorships or uh, donations you may have. <laughs> um, Especially, uh, especially if we're talking Disneyland, that's gonna that's gonna cost us some money to to, to pull that one off. Um, and if uh, if we do it and it goes it, and it goes uh, smoothly, uh, we may be able to even uh, take you uh, t take you on some rides uh, if it if at all possible. Because I think that would be really cool <laughs> myself, anyway. Oh yes. 
us, and I do believe we want to go. <laughs> Hang a Louie. There we go. Long Let's Beach. Go back to Longview. Yes. <laughs> That's totally the opposite direction. We are now in Washington State. Amazing how it happened that fast. <laughs> Probably because of the fact that it like uh, drops off into the uh, <laughs> water there. Yeah, could be awfully wet, I suppose. Yeah, could be. <laughs> yeah, similar. <laughs> Ooh, we're gonna go through a tunnel. <laughs> this is exciting because we don't have a lot of tunnels around uh, around our area. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it is about a uh, half hour drive, uh, according to Dan, about a half hour drive. Whoop, tunnel. <laughs> <coughs> yes. No, we didn't just cross a time zone, we were just in a tunnel. <laughs> yes, it's about a half hour drive from Astoria to Long Beach. So I've heard. Fort Columbia. Fort Columbia National. Park yeah, or it's state on the park. Other side of the bridge. From Astoria across the bridge, just uh, left. Yeah. Pretty much, you stay on this road, you can't miss it. No, you can't <laughs> miss it. I'm assuming this is this is a highway, whatever. <laughs> yeah, highway something. I don't know. What it is. We'll have to look on a map. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Of course, he did say on the side back there when he turned off to the left, just as you get off the bridge. Oh yeah. Paying attention. Well, I'll find it on the map and uh, I'll put it up in graphic right about now. We'll show you exactly what highway we are on. And as soon as if I'm, we probably will see another sign somewhere along the way here, and we'll tell you exactly what highway we're on. We do know we're in Washington, though. We do know that much. <laughs> and we know that's a pretty big boat. That was a pretty big boat that just went by, and that has nothing. To do. <laughs> I believe there was some kind of a. Uh, was some some kind of a lighthouse or something? Yeah. Or that that magazine that was sent to us. Oh, to Cape Disappointment. That's where it was, right there. This lighthouse. That sounds about right. Lighthouse or something like yeah, that. something like that. That'd be cool to check out. And I I believe that was somewhere uh, somewhere around this area. Yeah. <laughs> I don't exactly know where because I don't. I've. I'm pretty sure I've never been there. I don't think so. In fact, I know I've never I've never actually seen a lighthouse. I don't get out much, folks. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. He spends too much time editing films. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just editing road trips, so I <laughs> don't uh, don't get a chance uh, don't get as much a chance to be out as. Uh... I sleep during the day, so it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, and uh, uh, here we can uh, get give a. Uh, give a plug for our upcoming project, which will be out sometime before the end of the year. Um, this is a little bit a little bit different from uh, what you're used to. <laughs> um, we have a project we're working on right now called uh, Video Ventures. Um, this would be more for a uh, uh, more for a younger audience, I would say, or. Uh, our, our generation and younger probably um, dealing with video games uh, we'll have uh, we'll have games as, as far back as, as we have them basically from as far back as uh, 78 on all the way up through 97 um, basically a, a history of video games plus uh, um, tips codes tricks strategies all kinds of things like that um, and it's more than likely it's going to end up being a mini series because we've got so many games. As of now, we have nine game systems. Um, <laughs> it's going to take quite a bit of tape uh, to uh, to put it to uh, to put it together. Just we're covering, we're covering several huge games. Yeah. Uh, like the Zeldas and yeah, and uh, Final Fantasy, the the first one. 
uh, don't even I don't want to attempt covering the other ones at this point. <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of the 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 bigger games, and so it's it's taking quite a bit of tape just 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 to record the games themselves, and then uh, plus we have uh, we have a little bit of a story behind it. Um, in fact, the the show will be like a story within a story, um, or or a show within a story, more or less. <laughs> Um, it, it should be pretty fun. Uh, something something we've we've had in the works for for a while. In fact, we we started it. We actually started it. Yeah, seven years ago. Um, it wasn't. We we never imagined going to this extent. It's going to be much better than what we had originally planned. Uh, started shooting in the summer of '90, so you'll actually see uh, some old uh, old footage of us. So uh, it may be it may be kind of a trip. <laughs> That we actually taped part of it seven years ago, and uh, we'll just be finishing it this year. <laughs> but, but, but it should be fun, and uh, especially for, um, for, uh, for the younger kids, I would say, uh, you know, the teenagers, and and for and for the older kids like us, <laughs> uh, for kind of uh, nostalgia. That uh, that we actually have some of the some of the older game systems, and it's uh, it's really going to be uh, we're going to do comparisons on games and see just how much they've changed uh, over the last uh, well, pretty much over the last uh, 20 years. Yeah. Well, as, as as far as the games we've got, video games actually go back farther than we thought. <laughs> uh, they actually go back to uh, 72. Uh, at least home home games anyway. Uh, we don't have we don't have them back quite that far, <laughs> but uh, about 78 is as far back as as our stuff goes, which is still pretty far. And it's amazing how much they've changed in in the last in the last 20 years. Oh, definitely. We'll be covering systems like the Intel Odyssey, the, Coleco, yeah, Intellivision. Intellivision, excuse me, <laughs> and Coleco Odyssey. NES, Game Boy, Super NES, and Nintendo 64. <laughs> well, for us, that's quite a few systems. Yeah, we we have Atari. You can't forget yeah, Atari. Yeah, got Atari. Yeah, we have we have nine systems all together right now. Um, possibly thinking about adding one more, but we'll have to wait and see. We may have to uh, see what happens. <laughs> Pardon if you see a hand coming at you. <laughs> yes. As long as we're on screen, we're okay. And as long and as long as and as long as you folks can see out the windshield, that's all that really matters. Looks like we're coming up to um, uh, Raymond, what, uh, yep. Bernie? Next right? No, I don't think so. Long Beach Peninsula. Long Beach Peninsula Recreation Area. Okay, we are on Highway 101. Ilwaco and Long Beach. 101 oh. North. North is that way, I guess. Yeah, that would be it. Oh, I've been, I've been there, dude. There's a sign for Marsh's Free Museum. I've been there. There's weird stuff in there. In fact, I think it is in Long Beach. It must be because I've been there. I've been to that museum. There's some weird stuff in there, dude. It's, it's similar to the museum we visit that Mark and I went to in Seattle. Or actually, that wasn't a museum. It was a Oh, they 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 called it a, a ye old curiosity shop is what they called it, but uh, same kind of stuff. I mean, just some like weird stuff. You know, like they I, they have like a two headed goat or something in there in this one here in Long Beach. Whoa! It's like weird stuff like that. That'd be cool. And and it, and apparently, well, according to the sign, the billboard there, it, uh, this one's free. Even though even though it is a museum. That's weird. And if I remember right, they have a huge uh, frying pan. They have a huge frying pan. It's like it's almost like a like a cast iron statue or something. But it's a frying pan. In fact, I have a coin somewhere. It's like a souvenir coin, and it's like the world's biggest frying pan. <laughs> we are now in uh, we are now in Ilwaco, Ilwaco, Waka Waka Waka, Washington.
You know, if I didn't see signs, I'd swear we were in Warrington. <laughs> it looks very similar to Warrington. Huh. We're probably right across the uh, right across the river from it. <laughs> yeah. Statue guy here. Uh -huh. Ilwaco Fire Department. See, this almost looks like the road that's right across from uh, Fort the Fort Stevens entrance. It looks it looks a lot like it. Okay, Long Beach. Hang a Roscoe at the light. Did I say Roscoe at the right? Or, <laughs> or Roscoe? I meant to say Roscoe at the light. Did I say right or light? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know what I'm talking about. What, whatever I'm talking about. Here. <laughs> I know why. I know why. <coughs> You're probably more tired than I am. That's <laughs> probably why. Everything's really funny when you're tired. If you're, if you're like us folks, you get really stupid and silly when you're tired. Dan's just been up for 14 hours or whatever it's been. <laughs> but yes, it is... Uh, it is 10.14 in the morning, folks. This is the earliest we've ever been out on the road. And probably the earliest we'll ever be out on the road. Yeah. More road construction. Seems no matter where we go, we can't get away from road construction. Okay, we are a half mile from Long Beach, Washington. Actually, I think we might be in it, but... Well, the sign, we just passed the sign that says half mile to Long Beach, but <laughs> half mile ain't that far, so uh, so we're pretty much there. Ten sixteen. You know where you're going, right? <laughs> Actually, I hope you're not quite sure. <laughs> oh, this is good. Uh, we're getting close because I remember the McDonald's. Okay, we're coming up on a Mickey D's. And okay. So our beach access here coming up. Yeah, there, we passed a sign that back there ways it said beach access one mile. Should be just about there. Yeah. You mean a left? Left. Yeah. <laughs> left? Right. <clears throat> Whee! That comes the fun part of parking. Yeah, mopeds. Yeah, this is the cool. road, dude. Because <laughs> I think they have a Shiloh Wind or something like that right there. Some kind of. I uh, can't quite read it. Sorry, I'm blind here. Edgewater in. You're kidding, right? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. So, like, how far away are we? Well, the beach is just right up there. Mm. So, anyway, we'll see you guys on the beach. On the beach. All right, here we are now on the actual Long Beach, and we have some uh, stunt kites over here, and some of the uh, Boeing uh, kites are called uh, kite trains several designs um, some of the ones that I know I've held about 102 103 of the smaller kites that you see in the smaller ones um, some of the bigger designs up uh, just above the stunt kite are actually more to the left now uh, the more colorful views of the big aerials that are out and as you can see uh, just a little farther here to the uh, to the left over this way you can see a uh, kite organization yeah, this is the uh, smaller portion of it. As we turn around, we can see a very uh, where the main action is at, and this is where our main concentration is going to be. We do have a <coughs> previous arrangement with one of these kite clubs that we'll be uh, talking with, who will go into more depth about the different various kites and 
and types of things that they were privileged to discuss on the way down. So uh, next time uh, when we come back, we'll hopefully find them and uh, actually perform an interview. Which title will do it? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> it's yeah. your turn now. <laughs> All right. So we will see you guys at the interview. Here we are with the uh, Lavender Kite, uh, Lavender Winds Kite Club, uh, one of their members. Uh, about how long? About how uh, long have you been doing this? Oh, I've I've enjoyed kites for um, most of my life, but um, I've really got into it maybe the last eight years or so. Um, got into it as a hobby, and um, it's a hard obsession to uh, to get rid of. About how. How big is your organization here? Um, our particular club has got um, maybe 25 or 30 members. We're scattered across the world, um, but uh, most of our activities are in the San Francisco Bay Area. We have monthly flies, and um, and we uh, like to attend kite festivals, put up a ground display, and uh, fly some kites. And about how many festivals do you attend a year, approximately? Well, we go to maybe. Four for a year, including this one. Including this one. Yeah. This is an annual thing. But where are the other ones located? Um, we've we've been to kite festivals uh, mostly in the San Francisco Bay Area. There's one in Berkeley, the Berkeley Kite Festival that they have every year at the end of July. That's a two-day event. And uh, then there's a, a, a wind festival in San Ramon, Wind and Art Festival, which is in the east on the east side of the San Francisco Bay and we've attended that um, for the last few years and um, then there's the Golden Gate Challenge which is put on by the Northern California Kite Club and they have a little stunt kite competition and um, a lot of people like to get together there and put up single line kites so that's great. Too. that's great so would you say what you're wearing is about standard uh, kite festival gear <laughs> well you'll see all sorts of uh, all sorts of get ups out here from from uh, colored overalls and uh, to uh, to beach pants and wild colored shirts and crazy hats and you see lots of people with the big giant tall hats. Those are those are kind of popular this year for uh, kite festival wear. That sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the uh, type of display showing off right now? Well, we've made a we've made a, a display um, of a garden. We um, have some spinning flowers on poles with leaves and I started with one and thought that a bunch of them would look good together and um, so our club is, um, ha has have been making them for the last year making um, these spinning things and we have maybe about 20 of them all together and um, so we haul them out here and put them up for people to uh, enjoy. So you do hand make these, that's right. Yes, yes. Any other type of kites you guys hand make? Or? Um, if you see this one up here, it's flying, that has a rainbow stripes on it. That's a, a roller kite, and that's one that I also made um, a few years ago. It's been a while since I made that one. And if you don't hand make these kites, where's a good place to start picking them up at? Well, there's kite shops um, in in a lot, a lot of places around. Um, you'll find one in, um, in this area, you'll find one in, in Portland, and uh, there's also um, a lot of them on the coast, on the uh, Washington coast and also the Oregon coast. So you can probably find one here in Long Beach then? Oh yeah, there's three kite shops right in Long Beach. You can pick up all sorts of kites there. All right, sounds good. Sounds real good. Perhaps we can uh, snag you to uh, Give us kind of a general idea of the different types of uh, styles that are out here and sure. possibly competitions. Sure. Oh, cool. This crab that's out here, this is a kind of stunt kite. It's um this is really the first time I've seen it in person. I've seen pictures of it. But he's got all sorts of uh, all sorts of lines that he's got hooked together um, to this kite. And he maneuvers them so to make this crab move like a puppet in the air. If you'd like to, well, this big structure over here, this is um, this is um, wind art that um, has been put up by a kite maker from Seattle, and um, they brought their um, their things to sell. They have wind art to sell that they have on the boardwalk, and they came up and put up this display out here. 
and um, part of the kite festival is 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 art in the sky and also on the ground. Um, anything that that the wind can blow and uh, work with the wind to create um, either an art form or a lifting surface. Sounds good. I see an occasional signs down here, like this one, just on the other side of this lady here, saying no stenters. Yeah, they've got. Um, it would be nice if um, if everybody could just go out and fly whatever kites they wanted, um, wherever they wanted. But you get too many people, and you get kites that are not. Sometimes stunt kites are not really compatible with single line kites because they um, stunt kites are moving all across the sky, and if you're not watching where you're going then it's very easy to tangle up in single line kites and even cut them out of the sky. So these signs more more of like a, a safety type thing. Yeah, and for courtesy also. Good example, this big white kite is just out here that we got earlier. Yeah. What's that, What's that again? That's a big flow form kite. <laughs> it's got some, um, some deep cells in it and relatively few bridle lines as compared to some other, other kites. Um, they have parafoil kites, which are similar, but I don't see any up right now. They have a lot of bridle lines and, and really small cells inside of them. Now, bridle lines are the ones that connect them to the main line? That's right. That's right. From the flying line to the kite. Okay. And a lot of kites will have um, many bridle lines. You can have anywhere from two to four to six and up to 21, like some of these big rectangular kites have. What? Rectangular kites are um, are a Japanese type of a kite called an Edo kite, and um, it's it's characterized by lots of bridle lines and a rectangular shape. Now, uh, what have you found when it comes to uh, making kites and different aerial displays? What has been the best materials for you to use? Um, well. I enjoy using ripstop nylon that's uh, also used for sail, sailboat sails. Um, there's a lot of, of newer, more um, high-priced materials that are out there now. There's um, polyester fabrics and, um, that's, and, and also um, carbon framing and they've got really, you can get some really expensive materials but I like the cheaper stuff. I like lower price materials and um, picking up things on sale and then I go from there and see what I can make with the kite rather than just starting out from a particular idea and then buying all the expensive items to go into it. But there's all sorts of, you know, back in the old days kites were made with sticks and paper and you can still make kites with that today and uh, you don't have to, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money um, buying kites but um, you can make a lot of really nice kites for a pretty low price. That sounds good. It's the uh, sound system over here in the background. Is that general with uh, most kite festivals? Most of them will have a, a sound system, um, especially when they have uh, competitions because they need to. One of the competitions they have is a, a, a choreographed kite routine to music. And so they. Um, They'll play the music over the PA system so the flyer and all the people can hear and also the judges too. So. That's good. I hear some, uh, some of the sports can be rather very competition-wise using different types of uh, lines to snag other flyers. Yeah, there are, um, there are some competitions where you actually try to cut down another kite um, or at least make it hit, hit the ground. That's, um, it's kite flying that was fighter kites that were um, originated in China and India. Um, there's, there's small fighter kites and there's also large fighting kites where they have teams of people that, that are on the line. You get four or five people on the line of, of a kite and um, run back and forth trying to saw through somebody else's line. It's really, um, it can be kind of fun to watch. Absolutely. I'm sure it can be. Okay. He's running this one here? Yeah. Okay. Where'd it go? I lost it.
they're all coming off of one. Those are all theirs? Yeah. some of the, uh, what do they call it, mystery ballet theaters or something like that? Yes. Where they, uh, they play music and the kite flyers have to, uh, basically, uh, choreograph their kite flying to, uh, go with the music. This is working out so good.
spin it nice, you know, the, the sparkles off of it, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, weird. It's got a spinning thing in it, I think. That's wild. It's weird seeing that from a distance. It's like <laughs> it's like it animated up there. Or oh, you can see inside these things, man. And the UFO thing. It's like they got <laughs> like support beams or something inside the things. You can see inside there. Yeah. Well, yeah, they'd ha they'd have to to keep to keep them in the air. They'd have to fill them up like a hot air balloon. Oh yeah. Really good. That's cool. Sorry, guys. Yeah, those are called novelty cakes. Look into this. <laughs> no, paraffin. It's a paraffin or something. See, a paraffin is a novelty. See that white one's a paraffin. The big white one. The big white one. Yeah. Map of the kite, basically. Well, Let's see, do we see any spin we got some music. Charlie McCleary, watch and see. Yeah. I thought I saw some. Yeah. See that red one? Just yeah. right underneath that one. That's a spin sock. You see those all the time. all those guys out there as long as boom, boom, boom. oh <laughs> I didn't even notice that there's one over there and far there it has like rings on it yeah it's like a bunch of Cheerios or something fruit loops <laughs> huh Let's see here um, there's that big one okay looks like through the camera it looks like birds that one train is over there it's like birds. Let's like in see. formation or something. See the quilted one? The one uh, just up to the upper right. Up to see the upper left. What is it? The upper left, this one here. It's called a flat. Oh, it kind of looks like the a square flag. one. With the train. Oh, and it's got a the tail. It's a flat. Yeah. It's like extra baggage. That's <laughs> one. Another one. See the pelican one? The one just above that one? Pelican? pelican? One this bird one? Oh. Well, it's red? No, no. Where am I looking here? This way. Up to the left. Oh, okay. The flat. Okay. The, the three? Yeah. Three up there. The multicolored ones. Those are flat. Those are stacked. So it's a flat stack, so to speak. Hmm. Right there. See those moving ones over there? They're in a train. Yeah, I was there. just I was just getting those. Okay, that That's cool. That is a stunt stack unit. That's what they call As they move around, this one looks like this. It's called a stunt stack unit. Let's see if we can get a regular stunt cat in on this one. Right there.
getting ready here real soon. Just taking a look at some of these here. It's the pan line clear up above us. Looks straight up. You can probably see it. I don't know. The camera might not pick it up too. Yeah, yeah. The kite flying area, all the kite flying areas are marked off with these uh, yellow ropes. Yeah. Be cool to see how they get one of those big things up in the air. Oh, this guy's here is moving this one. Road tramps! Road trips for when you just want to get in the car and go. Road trips for when you want to see the sights without leaving the couch. A new series from Nowhere Video Productions. Road trips, where getting there is half the fun and in most cases, half the show. If you've seen Channel 9 over the last few years, chances are you've seen some interesting programs. And chances are many of those programs were produced by Nowhere Video Productions. Since 1993, Nowhere Video has been teamed up with CCTV Channel 9 to bring unique entertainment to the public in the form of music, comedy, and youth programs. Now, let's take a look back and see what we've brought you.
All this and more only from Nowhere Video Productions and Columbia Community Television. Local entertainment at an affordable price. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Road Trips. We uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we took you around the... Uh, the, uh, the annual kite festival here in Long Beach, Washington. Absolutely. If you'd like to pick your interviewee, interviewee, <laughs> Ryan Bradley, for uh, taking us through what he knows of the uh, kite festival. The tour. Experience. <laughs> yes. And uh, that's going to do it uh, from here in Long Beach. So, uh, for road trips, I'm Todd Hilton. No, I'm Dan Bradley. And uh, we'll see you next time on Road Trips! of the series by calling CCTV Channel 9 at 503-397-5886. It's just that simple. Now, you can hit the road anytime you want with Nowhere Video's Road Trips. Order now.
Road Trips fans, we're going to be live, that's right, live on Saturday, October 11th at 6 o'clock for our season finale. Join us as we look back on the last 12 episodes and look forward to the next season. So hit your couch as we hit the studio for Road Trips Live. Can't get out of the house because of bad weather? Don't worry! Bored out of your mind with nothing to do? No problem! Because the boys are back, and it's time for the new season of... Road Trips! That's right, Nowhere Videos Road Trips is back, with all new vehicles, brand new on-screen maps, a new guest co-host, new destinations, and the same two guys, Dan Bradley and Todd Hilton. 